how does ChatGPT or other large language models or LLMs actually work? No hype, no scams, just AI LLMs explain the way I do everything else. Now, uh, before I get started, LLMs rely on huge data sets to function effectively and our everyday online activities generate a lot of personal data. And that's why I use PIA VPN. I'm headed down to Virginia Beach in a couple hours to see this girl. It's kind of a casual thing and that's why I always bring protection. That's right, PIA VPN. So click the link in the description below or go to PIAVPN.com slash Macbeth to get 83% off plus four months free. Look, I'm old enough to remember the 1980s when if you're playing games and put the wrong five and a quarter inch into that slot, you can get a virus that can spread to everybody else you played with. So I'm very careful before I connect to some girl's hotspot, especially if I'm not committed. So think of PAA VPN as protection, but for your computer. PAA VPN creates a tunnel between your computer and the public internet that hackers and rogue government agents can't penetrate. In just a couple of clicks, you can select from several different servers in multiple locations. I just started that Lance Armstrong 30 for 30 show on Netflix, and when I'm at this girl's house, I don't want to deal with that Netflix household error, so I'm going to put PAA VPN on her Xbox and connect back up to Maryland. That might solve the problem. If you don't have PAA VPN, you are sticking your Wi-Fi antenna into God knows where. So click the link in the description below or go to PAAVPN.com slash Macbeth to get 83% off plus four months free. Now let's talk about ChatGPT. Now this video is probably gonna get shared a lot, so allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ryan Macbeth. I'm a software engineer and director of integration for the Texas Aero Med Lab, which uses AI-powered drones to deliver whole blood to wounded soldiers without relying on GPS. We actually don't use large language models in our software at the Texas Aero Med Lab, mainly because the battlefield is a dynamic place. LLMs like ChatGPT aren't actually capable of reasoning or figuring out their way around problems, but large language models are good at predicting the most likely token, a word or a letter that comes next in a sequence. And their answers are limited only to the training data that they've seen. It's like they're in a box. This means that large language models are constrained to the boundaries of what? we know. Think of it like this. Um, you've used autocomplete. You know how you type in Google and you go flights to, and in my case, it might complete to Miami. Well, there are a couple of ways you can get something like that to work. The first way would be an alphabetical text list. Like, let's say you live in Maryland like I do. You type in the letter M and the software looks up a list of all U.S. states and displays everything with M. And then you hit the letter A, and that list gets reduced to Maine, Maryland, and Massachusetts. Then you hit R, and you just get Maryland. Now, for a list of 50 states, that's fine. But what if you're Google, and you want to autocomplete the term flights to around the world? Well, it would make sense to autocomplete the most popular place that people are searching for flights. Now, there might be also uh, other factors, like if a person's searching for skiing a lot, you might autocomplete the word Utah after flights too. But in this case, I'm just gonna give a basic example that uses training data to display a frequently typed destination. So, how does an LLM know what to suggest? Well, it all starts with a neural network. Think of it as a digital brain inspired by our own. LLMs are trained on massive amounts of text data, learning patterns and context of language. One key feature of LLMs is called transformer architecture. It uses something called attention mechanisms to focus on different parts of input text, understanding the context better. But I'll get to that in a moment. The first thing that happens when you type in an input prompt like flights to is that flights to is split into tokens. Now, if you want to get technical, a token is usually a word and it can be parts of words or sometimes even characters but usually it's just a word. So now we have two tokens, flights and two. Each token is then converted into something called a high dimensional vector. Now don't get wrapped around the axle about the term high dimensional vector. We use vectors all the time. Like um, let's say you're looking at a location on a map. You're using a two dimensional vector, right? X and Y. And in a three dimensional vector, we know where to put the camera in a first person game. You have X, Y, and Z. A high dimensional vector 
is essentially a list of numbers that represents data in a space with many dimensions. And in the context of language models, each word or token is mapped to a high dimensional vector. This is also called embedding, which I'm gonna use going forward. These embeddings capture semantic meanings and relationships between words based on the model's training. So the token flight might actually have an embedding that looks like this. Now, this example has 10 dimensions, but typically applications like ChatGPT have 768 or 1024 dimensions. This is a trade-off between performance and efficiency. And if that sounds like a heck of a lot of dimensions, language is incredibly complex. By using a high number of dimensions, we can capture the nuances and relationships between words more effectively. It also represents contextual information, as in what kind of flight are we talking about? Are we talking about an airplane flight? Are we talking about flight as in fight or flight, like what an animal might do when you spook it? Are we talking about a flight as in a drink sampler? Other dimensions might represent syntactic bridges. Uh, is this a flight of planes, a flight of birds, a flight of wine? Other embeddings also explore relationships with other words. For example, if I say haste makes, you're probably going to say waste. Haste makes waste. And I could guess that you were going to say waste because your brain has all this training data that you've been gathering all your life. You've heard people say haste makes waste plenty of times. Now, is it possible that someone might say haste makes plutonium? I mean, plutonium is a word, but it probably doesn't appear very much after the words haste makes, even though it is a valid word to use in a sentence. So, if the prompt was being asked to make a rap song, then maybe the next word might be based, embraced, taste, paste, uh, face. Uh, they all rhyme, so those words might have higher values to appear. So I'm sure you kind of get the idea here. Other dimensions cover things like sentiment, associated word order, and so on. Then you enter another type of transform called context-aware embeddings through something called a self-attention mechanism. This allows the model to weigh the importance of each token in context with other tokens. For flights too, the model will determine how much attention to pay to flights and how much attention to pay to two when predicting the next word. This generates an output that is most applicable to the prompt input. So let's talk about this output. In order to choose the next word, the model can either pick the word of the highest probability directly, and this is called greedy decoding, or sample from a probability distribution to introduce some kind of variability. And in this case, the model predicts Miami as the next token. And all this information is transferred again into text and printed on screen. Now remember how I said that LLMs aren't capable of actual reasoning? That's because these vectors are coming from values that have been pre-trained. In a case like ChatGPT, the values have been pre-trained on basically everything that has ever appeared on the internet. In fact, the acronym GPT means Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And it's that pre-training part that makes this behave the way we think an AI is supposed to behave. If you trained your AI on samples of rap music in order to generate rhymes, that AI will probably be pretty good at generating rhymes, but it won't be so good at writing software code. Large language models like ChatGPT really can't reason. In fact, I would be reluctant to even call them AIs at all. LLMs are really more like advanced databases. Let's say you have a database and you search all the times that a user has logged into a website. The database only knows about the data that it has in the database. If the database ever got temporarily disconnected from the logging server, it wouldn't be able to display the logins it didn't know about, and it wouldn't be able to guess at them either. This is important because people who are grifters or who don't actually know anything about AI claim that one day AI will be able to generalize the new data it hasn't seen yet, as if a computer could generalize when you've logged in to a website. But people who say that AI will be generalizing things one day, they can't ever seem to explain how it will be able to do that. And if you want to get technical, if the same prompt is used, unless conditions change, the answer will always be Miami. Large language models like ChatGPT are incredibly sophisticated in how they process and generate text. 
They use high dimensional vectors and transformer architectures to predict the next word in a sequence based on extensive retraining data. But remember, these models are not capable of true reasoning or understanding. They can't generalize beyond their training data that's in that box. They're powerful tools, but they can have their limitations. Always be mindful of what they can and cannot do. And if someone says otherwise, they're probably trying to sell you something. All right, look, if you really want me to sell you something, head on over to Bunker Branding, get a Live Laugh Launch for a Patriot Missile shirt. Uh, you can also grab one of my Ryan Macbeth in action figures from the Knife Hand Company. It even comes with its own trading card with my stats on the back. And thank you guys so much for watching. It's me, Captain Bannon of the documentary Team Yankee. When I'm not kicking commie butts, I'm wearing t-shirts from Ryan Macbeth available at Bunker Branding, Knife Hands, High Mars, Landmines, Patriot, and even my favorite, the tow missile. Mushna, we want t-shirt too. Take a hike, commie. Ah! So come on down to Bunker Branding and take a stand for what's really important about America, capitalism.